Hello students. Today we can see the primary and secondary metabolites. In a living cell, we can see thousands of organic biomolecules present inside them. These organic molecules can be monosaccharides, fatty acids, glycerols, lipids or amino acids, nitrogen bases, nucleotides, etc. These organic compounds are constantly utilized in various metabolic reactions that occur inside the cell. As these organic compounds are involved in various metabolic reactions, they are termed as metabolites. Now, what is a primary metabolite? The metabolites that is directly involved in normal growth, development and reproduction of an organism is said to be a primary metabolite. And this primary metabolite usually performs a particular physiological function in the organism. So whatever examples which we have seen, they all are primary metabolites like lactic acid, amino acid, monosaccharides, glycerols, nitrogen bases, etc. All these organic compounds are present in the animal cells. That doesn't mean that only animal cells are having all these organic compounds or the primary metabolites. Even the fungal or plant cells also have the primary metabolites. But when we analyze the plant cell or fungal cell or even the bacterial cell, we can see various other organic compounds or specialized metabolites or secondary products produced in their cells. So they are termed as secondary metabolites. So what is a secondary metabolite? The metabolites which are not directly involved in growth, development or reproduction of the organism is called a secondary metabolite. So these are uh, the specialized metabolites or the secondary products which are uh, produced by bacterial cells, fungal cells or even plant cells. Examples of these are alkaloids, flavonoids, rubber, essential oils, antibiotics, colored pigments, scent, gum, spices, etc. We have seen that the primary metabolites are having identifiable functions, isn't it? But on the other hand, the role or functions of all the secondary metabolites in the organisms are not properly understood at present. But many of them are useful to human welfare. That is, for example, if you take rubber, drugs, spices, scents and pigments, these are all useful for uh, human beings. Some uh, secondary metabolites are having ecological importance also. Here you can see some of the secondary metabolites. Pigments, for example, carotenoids, anthocyanins, etc., which is present in the plant, which gives various colors to the plants, like a yellow to orange color, etc. Now, alkaloids, example, morphine and codeine, these are used, morphine can be used as a pain uh, killer or a sedative. Codeine can also be used to reduce the pain. Then terpenoids are there, monoterpenes, diterpenes, etc. They can act as anti-inflammatory substances like antiviral or antifungal substances. Then essential oils are there like lemongrass oil which can be used to treat digestive problems. Then toxins like abrin and rixin are, are also a secondary product produced by some of the plants. Then lectins. For example, corn cannavalin A, that can be used as an agglutination. It helps in agglutination of cells or clumping of cells. Especially the RBCs, they will be getting clumped due to the presence of such uh, chemicals. Then drugs, uh, wind blasting, cucurbin, etc. It can be used, wind blasting can be used to, to treat cancer also. Then uh, to color uh, food also cucurbin can be used then polymeric substances like uh, rubber gums cellulose okay so these are some of the secondary metabolites next we can see about bio macromolecules in the beginning of this chapter we have seen that when we grind any tissue in trichloroacetic acid and filter it through a cheesecloth we can get an acid soluble pool and an in acid insoluble fraction 
the acid soluble pool contains the substances or organic compounds which are having a molecular weight that ranges from 18 daltons to 800 daltons so all these biomolecules which have molecular weight less than 1000 daltons are generally said to be as micromolecules or bio micromolecules or simply we can say the mass of biomolecules so these bio micromolecules are found in the acid soluble pool micromolecules means they micro means small isn't it that is they are having less molecular weight now when we see bio macromolecules macro means large they are having more molecular weight okay so bio molecules which are having molecular weight 1000 daltons and above are called bio macromolecules so these bio macromolecules are found in the acid insoluble fraction this acid insoluble fraction has only four types of organic compounds in them what are they they are proteins nucleic acids polysaccharides and lipids proteins nucleic acids and polysaccharides are having molecular weight more than 1000 daltons but lipids are having molecular weight less than 800 dalton only even though they are having less uh, molecular weight they are found in the acid insoluble fraction why see when we grind a tissue what will happen the cell membrane and all the other membrane bound organelles will broke down it will be broken down into pieces isn't it the as you all know the cell membrane is made up of protein and lipid so when the cell membrane is broken the lipids will get uh, accumulated to form vesicles because the lipids also will be broken down and they will join together they are, will be accumulated to form vesicles because they are water insoluble they cannot dissolve in water yes so they form globules or vesicles and uh, because of that they cannot pass through the cheese cloth by which we are filtering the uh, tissue okay after grinding with the trichloroacetic acid that's why even though the um, lipids are having less molecular weight they are not able to pass through that cheese cloth as they form vesicles they remain in the acid insoluble fraction itself that's why they are uh, coming under macromolecule actually they are not a bio macromolecules they are micromolecules only okay when we analyze the acid soluble pool what are the organic biomolecules present in them the same will be seen in the cytoplasm also so the cytoplasmic composition will be similar to that of the acid soluble pool and the macromolecules which are present inside the cytoplasm and the organelles will be the same as that present in the acid insoluble fraction okay so we can say all these uh, biomolecules and the macromolecules which are present in the acid soluble pool and the acid insoluble fraction together represent the chemical composition of a cell or a living tissue okay now here you can see an average com composition of the cell here the water forms about 70 to 90 percent of the cell cellular mass then proteins 10 to 15 percent carbohydrate 3 percent lipids 2 percent nucleic acids 5 to 7 percent and ions 1 percent so this is the composition of the cell and when we compare all this from this we can observe that water is the most abundant chemical in the living cell or in the living organism okay now we can see about polysaccharides poly means many saccharide means sugar what is polysaccharide polysaccharides are polymers of monosaccharide what is monosaccharide mono means single saccharide means sugar okay that is the substances which are having single molecule of sugar is called a monosaccharide that is the simple sugar okay they join together to form the polymer called the polysaccharide the polysaccharides are long chains of sugars which are linear or branched 
okay that is they can be seen as unbranched long chains of sugars or it can be seen as branched Uh, long chain of sugars okay and they can be seen as threads containing different monosaccharide just like the cotton fibers the cotton thread if you take that also is formed of polysaccharide okay now this polysaccharides can be homo polysaccharides or hetero polysaccharide what is homo polysaccharide homo means similar so if the polysaccharide is formed of single type of monosaccharide it is said to be as homo polysaccharide for example starch cellulose are a homo polysaccharides okay then what is hetero polysaccharide hetero means different so the polysaccharides which are formed of different types of monosaccharides are called hetero polysaccharides for example peptidoglycan it is formed of amino acid as well as glucose so we can say it as an example for hetero polysaccharide okay now here you can see the structure of the cellulose cellulose is a homo polysaccharide why we say it as a homo polysaccharide because it is made up of the monosaccharide glucose okay many glucose molecules will join together to form the cellulose okay so here in this picture you can see the repeated units that is the glucose are joined by glycosidic linkage and thus the cellulose is formed cellulose where you can find uh, in the plant cell wall the cell wall is made up of cellulose or the paper which we get uh, uh, which we are making from the paper i mean the plant pulp that is also formed of uh, cellulose or the cotton fiber the cotton thread they are all also formed of uh, cellulose okay another example of polysaccharide is starch and starch is the storehouse of energy in the plant tissues starch is formed of glucose molecules so on hydrolysis of starch we can get glucose molecules actually this starch is found in uh, abundant in the cereals potatoes legumes tapioca and banana and it is formed during the process of photosynthesis in the plants and it is the main carbohydrate storage material in plants the starch can form helical secondary structure what you are seeing is the helical secondary structure of starch so because of this helical structure it can hold iodine molecules in the helical portion and uh, that can give blue color so starch gives blue color with iodine okay the starch iodine is blue in color starch is a homo polymer as i told it is made up of glucose same way another homo polymer is glycogen glycogen is the storehouse of energy in animal tissue it is found in animal tissue it is the complex homo polysaccharide mainly found in animals especially in mammals even in fungi also it is found here also it is formed of glucose molecules that's why it is also said to be as a homo polymer because it is formed of only one type of monosaccharide this is the structure of inulin it is a polymer of fructose uh, cellulose and uh, starch glycogen i told it is the polymer of glucose this inulin is a polymer of fructose in a polysaccharide the right end is called a reducing end and the left end is called a non reducing end what is reducing end the end which is having free aldehyde or ketone group is said to be as reducing end okay so the right end is said to be reducing end because the right end of the polysaccharide is having a free aldehyde or a ketone group okay now the left end of the polysaccharide is called non reducing end why it is said to be non reducing end because it lack a free aldehyde or ketone group free aldehyde or ketone group is absent in the left end so that left end of the polysaccharide chain is said to be as non reducing end okay there are more complex polysaccharides in nature these complex polysaccharides are formed of amino sugars and chemically modified sugars for example glucosamine n acetyl galactosamine etc 
in the exoskeleton of arthropods a complex polysaccharide is present called chitin it is formed of n acetyl glucosamine what is this exoskeleton it is the skeletal like structures which is present on the outer surface of the body of arthropods what are arthropods it is a phylum in which the organisms are having jointed legs okay so these organisms are having an exoskeleton exo means outside skeleton means skeletal like structures don't think uh, just like the hard skeleton present in our body they are having it is not like that okay an exoskeleton is present on the outer surface of the body which is made up of a complex polysaccharide called chitin okay so that's all about polysaccharides